Konnichiwa. Welcome to another intriguing tale from the annals of history. On the 24th of November, 1971, in America, a Northwest Orient Airlines flight took off from Portland for a short 30-minute journey to Seattle. On board were 36 passengers and six crew members, but none knew that a hijacker was among them. His name was D.B. Cooper, a man dressed like a typical businessman in his mid-40s, wearing a business suit, white shirt, and black pants. He chose seat 18E in the last row of the plane. As soon as the plane took off, Cooper introduced himself to an air hostess named Florence Schaffner and handed her a note. Schaffner, thinking it was a flirtatious gesture, put the note aside without reading it. Cooper leaned in and told her to read the note, stating he had a bomb in his briefcase. When Schaffner opened the note, it was neatly written, Miss, I have a bomb in my briefcase and I want you to sit by me. To show he wasn't bluffing, Cooper opened his suitcase to reveal red cylinders, wires, and a large battery, indeed a bomb. Cooper then made his demands, $200,000 in cash, by 5 p.m., four parachutes and a fuel truck ready to refuel the plane upon landing. He warned against any tricks, threatening to blow up the plane if his demands were not met. Schaffner informed the pilots, who in turn notified air traffic control. The airline president, Donald Nairob, decided to comply fully with Cooper's demands to avoid any potential disaster and bad publicity for the airline. To buy time for the money to be arranged, the pilots were instructed to circle around Seattle. What was supposed to be a half-hour flight extended to three hours. Passengers were told there were minor technical difficulties causing the delay. Finally, at 5.46 p.m., the plane landed at Seattle's airport, away from the main terminal. An airline representative delivered the money and parachutes to Cooper, who then allowed the passengers and some crew to disembark, keeping only Tina Mucklow, another air hostess, with him. The plane was refueled and took off again, this time with Cooper giving precise instructions to the pilots to head towards Mexico City, flying at an altitude of 10,000 feet with specific wing angles and speed. Cooper sent Mucklow to the cockpit and locked the door. Alone, he prepared the parachutes and the money, then opened the rear stairs and jumped out of the plane into the dark night, becoming a legend. At 8.13 p.m., the pilots noticed the plane's tail tilted upwards, indicating Cooper had jumped. They landed in Reno, Nevada, where police and FBI agents searched the plane, finding only Cooper's tie with a tie clip, some torn parachute parts, and cigarette butts. Despite an extensive investigation, no trace of Cooper or the money was found. The case remained open for 45 years, closing in 2016 without answers. Who was Cooper? What happened to him? The mystery endures as one of the greatest unsolved cases in FBI history. This incident was remarkable not only for its daring nature, but also because no one was injured or killed.